thank you for joining us. We are going to have um, this available as a recap afterwards as a recording. So if you are not here live, um, at least you can check it out afterwards. Um, and thank you for joining us today. So welcome to our webinar. We thank you for attending and thank you to our panelists as well today. This is about how to train a new employee without an agriculture background. My name is Katie Hunter. I work for agcareers.com and I will be the moderator for today's event. Today, our goal is to give you insight from our panelists about their experience in introducing people to the world of agriculture. This webinar was made possible through our Feed Your Future initiative in partnership with the Ontario Federation of Agriculture and through funding through the Canadian Agricultural Partnership, the Government of Ontario and the Government of Canada. And if you could progress to the next slide, there are a few messages from our sponsors, our partners today uh, before we get started. So as part of OFA's Feeding Your Future Labor Project, the Ontario Ag Worker Training Certificate was launched in early 2021 as an intro training opportunity for workers new to agriculture. This course is relaunching on January 31st with updated information about road safety, biosecurity, and crop input safety. Two brand new modules will include mental health awareness in agriculture and hand tool operation and safety. Uh, if you are thinking about signing people up for this, you can take advantage of a $99 discount available until March 30th or March 31st, sorry, compared to the course's value of $299. If you are interested in enrolling employees or learning more, visit feedingyourfuture.ca, Agri Training, and check out the course syllabus. We have some information as well from the Ministry of Agriculture, Food, and Rural Affairs. Comment if you could change the slide. Um, so the Ministry of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs has several resources for agri-food employers to help employees better navigate the pandemic and to gain more information about the industry. Please take a look at some key links and resources available, including the Enhanced Agri-Food Workplace Protection Program that provides funding to help limit the spread of COVID-19, mental health resources for farmers, free safety connection webinars from the Workplace Safety and Prevention Services, and more. We will also share this slide with you by email after our presentation so that you have access to the information. With 2.3 million agriculture jobs in Canada, which is one in eight jobs, we rely on having great people in our industry to fill the many needs. Many companies are finding that some of the roles they're needing to fill within their organization can't always be filled with somebody that has a strong ag background already. Today, we're gonna to dive into some questions and topics with our panelists about introducing new employees to the ag industry that may not have a background in it. A few items to mention before we get started today. This will be a panel style webinar and you will have the opportunity to hear from each of our panelists. At the end of today's webinar, there will be time for additional questions if you have any. Please type your questions in the chat box if you have them and we will address the questions at the end. If you are asking a question, please indicate whether you are wanting us to ask all of the panelists or one particular panelist your question. We will be recording today's webinar and it will be available to watch afterwards on our website and on YouTube. So today our panelists joining us, thank you so much for being a part of our webinar today and, and sharing your knowledge and experience in agriculture with our guests today. We really appreciate your time and your support. Our panelists are Nancy Charlton, Dairy Advisor at De Laval, Gwen Paddock, Vice President, Southwestern Ontario Agriculture with Royal Bank of Canada, Mark Carey, Seed Sales Manager at Syngenta, Maggie Van Kamp, National Agriculture Practice Development Lead at BDO. So thank you today for joining us. We really are looking forward to hearing from you all. I am going to have each of our panelists introduce themselves today um, and tell us a little bit more about them. So if, uh, if you could get started, Nancy, and tell us a little bit about your background in agriculture and about your role. Oh, you're on mute. You would think after two years of this, uh, we would naturally mute and unmute. 
So thank you, Katie, for the opportunity to participate. I grew up on a small family dairy farm in Ontario, Canada. I graduated as a veterinarian a few years ago, and I've spent my career focused on food animal production, working in Ontario, Saskatchewan, China, and Russia. Uh, I joined De Laval 12 years ago and was physically in person for a great deal of my position, uh, but pivoted to, to virtual and just starting to get back to in person. And I support dealers and dairy farmers that purchase technology and software to manage their calves and dairy cows and their operation. I've always enjoyed traveling and meeting people, particularly farmers throughout the world. Um, this combined with working with global colleagues uh, keeps my position exciting and rewarding. I enjoy walking and some photography. And as you can see from my background, my second home in Newfoundland is an excellent location for this. Look forward to today. Thank you. Awesome. What a beautiful place to be. Next, I would like uh, to hear from Gwen about your background, please. Uh, good morning. I'm Gwen Paddock, and as mentioned, I'm the Vice President Agriculture in Southwestern Ontario uh, with Royal Bank of Canada. And I've worked for the bank since I graduated from the University of Guelph with a Bachelor of Science in Agriculture uh, with a uh, focus in agriculture economics. And that interest in agriculture stemmed from having grown up on a bee farm uh, just south of, uh, south of Guelph. Um, in my career, I've been with the bank now for 37 years. So uh, seen lots of changes in the agriculture sector and, and it's been really, really interesting to see how uh, our agriculture businesses and, and uh, whether it's farms or agribusiness, is how they've grown and, and uh, changed with the times. And so really looking forward to today's conversation because uh, one of the things we hear when we're sitting around the table with our clients is uh, the challenges around getting labor and getting help. And so uh, how do we address that in a way that really supports the industry going forward? Awesome, thank you so much, Gwen. And Mark, we'd love to hear from you. Yes, good morning, folks. Um, Mark Carey here. Um, I currently uh, reside and uh, live in um, Cambridge, Ontario, uh, with my wife, Karen, and two daughters, uh, Alexander and Samantha. Both of my daughters are off to university. Uh, one is going to be graduating here in April. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't talk them into uh, taking an agriculture path, but they're both uh, really happy with their disciplines. I um, uh, went to the University of Guelph, graduated many moons ago. Um, I've worked in the uh, agriculture industry now for about 30 plus years. Um, I've held uh, positions across Canada uh, with Monsanto uh, Canada, Bear Crop Science, and most recently Syngenta um, Canada. I just started uh, with this uh, new role here as, as Canadian sales manager um, for our seed business back in April. Uh, super exciting uh, what's going on in ag today um, and a lot of my comments will be kind of directed into that seed space that seed uh, uh, channel space most of my all of my experience has been on the commercial side of our business um, w whether it be in sales account management or I spent some time as our marketing manager for our corn portfolio uh, for Canada as well I've spent about 20 of my 30 plus years as a sales manager. And this conversation is a great one because I have actually uh, uh, hired and onboarded and brought um, non egg people into my teams over the years and uh, with with great success, I must say. Um, so um, so I'm looking forward to this uh, today and um, look forward to the conversation. Awesome. Thanks so much, Mark. That's a great intro. Maggie, we'd love to hear from you. Well, I'm honored to be part of this panel with these people. Uh, quite a crew you've gathered together today, uh, Katie. I'm um, actually coming, calling you or from my office in Lindsay, Ontario, which is near my farm because I farm as well. Uh, I have a chicken farm at Blackstock, which is about 30 minutes south of Lindsay. Um, you may know me previously. I was um, an ag journalist. I was senior uh, business editor with Country Guide for years. And uh, prior to that, worked across Canada and lived across Canada in, in various locations working as a, an ag journalist. Um, 
very happy. I think I've got the longest handle of anybody on the panel, I got to say. Uh, <laughs> but actually, what I do for BDO is I, I act as their national director. So I get to sort of touch a lot of things uh, lightly. And uh, one of the biggest challenges we're seeing across the firm, but also uh, across agriculture in this country is the talent gap. And uh, hopefully today's conversation, I'm going to learn a few things, uh, but also I hope that we're able to maybe push push the agenda ahead a little bit. Awesome. That's great. Thanks, Maggie. You guys all have really unique experiences, and it's really great to have all four of you here on our webinar. I think uh, everybody watching today and everybody tuning in later will definitely uh, gain a lot of insight from what you have to share with us today. So uh, the style of our webinar, I'm going to ask some questions. Some will be to all of you, but I will ask each of you uh, when it's your turn to go. So my first question today, and if anybody else that is watching today does have questions, please type them in the chat and we will be sure to ask them if we have time at the end. So our first question today um, is, please provide an example of a role filled by a person that was new to agriculture or without an agriculture background. What might have gone well and what did you learn as a manager or trainer? Mark, could you speak to this? Sure, so I actually do have a real life example of this um, uh, in my future uh, or previous uh, roles. Um, I would hire uh, what we called sales associates. So I'm gonna be kind of pretty transparent here, give these real life examples because um, I probably hired uh, over four or five different folks um, over the course of the years. Two of them in particular were non-ag backgrounds. Um, so these, these roles, these sales associate roles were really kind of training ground to become a full-time kind of sales rep out in the field. So we would bring these folks in um, basically on a kind of a two year kind of window, get them trained to move into a full time position. And, and the experience was really good. Um, you've got to start out um, quite, uh, quite uh, gradual and bring them on board um, and gradually increase their responsibilities over that kind of, let's say two year window. And I found in both cases, they both ended up with full-time positions um, in either a sales role or one went into one of our uh, operational uh, roles. What went well here, I'm a big believer, and I'll probably touch on this a couple of times today, in the 70-20-10 development kind of philosophy. 70% of, of the time developing a person and, and developing their skill set is, is on the job. OK, so that's kind of in the job, in the role, kind of making mistakes and learning from those mistakes and kind of moving forward. 20 percent of the job is really kind of near to the job. So in other words, kind of that coaching, mentoring, the buddy system, kind of working um, uh, with with kind of experts in their field uh, to help bring those folks along as far as their skill sets. 10 percent is kind of kind of away from the job, if you will. And that's kind of the formal training component. So um, that that's kind of how I've uh, 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 kind of kind of evolved over time with with these new two egg folks is bring them in. And, and initially you're going to have more formal training and more coaching and mentoring. And then eventually uh, with people in their positions, it's more the, the true 70, 20, 10 rule. Um, I'm a big believer in the buddy system. So uh, when you bring somebody on that's new, you attach them to a buddy, uh, somebody that's competent, somebody that wants to do that type of role. And uh, that is, I have found, has been super, super helpful. Um, what, uh, what the last part of the question here is, is, is what did I learn as a manager? So I, I really learned that, that the industry knowledge can be learned. OK, you don't have to grow up on a farm to learn about the seed business in my my space. You can learn that um, it you you want to bring people in that have certain skills. So so want to have people that are curious, want to have people that can learn, 
want to have people that can collaborate and work in a team environment. Those are really important things. And boy, you can never underestimate the abilities of people. Um, if they have those skills and that desire, they can learn the position and, uh, and, and be very, very good at it. I'll just add this last thing. I always try to um, hire my future boss. That's one of my objectives is to bring people into our organization that can take on bigger and bigger roles in the organization. And I actually did that. Um, and the individual uh, that that um, we brought in was was a non egg background, however, went to the University of Guelph, but ended up having a lot of business management skills and ended up uh, uh, elevating through the organization. So so it is possible. And there's uh, a real life example for you there. Awesome. That's a great example. Thank you so much. Gwen, I'd like to ask you the next question about hiring at, hiring somebody onto your team that doesn't have an ag background. Um, what feedback might employees have shared and were there barriers that you came across uh, when dealing with that that you maybe didn't expect? Could you speak to that a little bit? Sure. And actually, what I would say is um, when I think about ag backgrounds, there's ag backgrounds where somebody grew up on a farm, uh, but then there's ag uh, experience where they've developed a passion for agriculture that hasn't come from having grown up on a farm, but has maybe come from having relatives that uh, grandparents that had a farm at one time, or even just, you know, when you hear some of the excitement about the industry and the potential it has, that that's where their passion comes from. So I would, I would say uh, in our, in our business, we wouldn't hire somebody who didn't have a passion for agriculture. So it doesn't mean that they had to grow up on a farm, but it means that uh, they have to have that uh, that uh, real appreciation for the sector and, and what the sector brings. So that's kind of, uh, I would say, table stakes for us. Uh, as far as uh, feedback, um, really, when you think about somebody coming into the industry, if somebody came in with no ag background, uh, there's a language to agriculture uh, that is specific. There's a, uh, when you think about agriculture, very different than some businesses because the home is quite often at the place of business, which is the farm. So that's a bit different. And then the legacy of farms uh, can be different than what uh, they might have been exposed to. So I think it's it's looking at what is the person bringing into the role as far as skills and capabilities and knowledge level. And then to draw on what Mark was saying, then you look at the training and the mentoring that you put around that person in order to help them round out uh, those spots where they may not have as well-developed skills and capabilities as what we would like to see. Perfect. That's great. So the next question that I have is for Maggie. I'm curious about what role managers and mentors and coworkers play in onboarding and bringing some of these people onto your team with, within your organization. Um, and is the culture open and prepared and accepting of these of these new team members? Um, how do you kind of bring that ag piece to them to the forefront? There we go, not unmuted. Um, BDO is a very large firm, right? There's 4,000 employees uh, and the vast majority is not agriculture based. Uh, so we hire good accountants first and good technicians and good bookkeepers first, and then we try to support them. So that's kind of the approach we've taken. Um, and I think I've been really happy over the last few years sort of developing structures in which to support them. So we developed a system of agriculture teams, uh, took our largest our largest offices and uh, created leaders there that are not partners, but they will be someday. Um, and so they learn how to lead meetings and how to uh, approach, uh, you know, new clients. They learn sort of the leadership skills that they'll require. And then under them is um, the group that are keen on agriculture for and do a lot of work in that area. And they are not necessarily from farms, um, but we make sure that they constantly have information. So. Um, that system alone was really, really supportive. Um, the ag leaders, uh, ag team leaders actually have a, a mentor that's a partner that has an extensive ag background, so they can go to them at any time. Um, so that's been a really shift turnaround for, for the firm to have that system in place. 
We also identify certain people across the firm that have sector specialties. So they're kind of our go to people. Um, so we have someone say, for, for example, Coralie Foster, uh, Mitchell partner there, also crop farms with her family. And so she's our crop specialist. So if anybody has, say, a question about, um, say, Grain Farmers of Ontario program, they'll go to Coralie and ask ask that or an agri stability program they'll go and ask Coralie. Um, we also do that on a service line level so we have a tax specialist we have you know a wealth management specialist. we have a technology specialist that we can we've identified and that is involved on our national level um, so everyone we we've tried to approach this that we're going to support everyone be available for any questions and then help align our goals and our approaches to a national level so it works all the way down like cascades. Awesome, that's great. So Nancy, I know that when we spoke, you talked about how you really spend time trying to develop students and introduce students to agriculture um, so that then they could consider a role with your organization down the road once they have some of that ag background. So could you speak to kind of how you do that, how you engage students to be interested in a career in agriculture and that pathway? Sure. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. I was having some problems with my headset. Um, yeah, so basically um, through my network, when anybody asks me to participate in something, I, I just say yes. Um, back when I was a veterinarian in the field, there was a student program and uh, I specifically tried to take at least one non-egg oriented student a summer and in the truck while we're driving from call to call just start throwing out questions. In the food animal vet world, I believe they must show up as a graduated vet having egg background. Um, however, with the vet shortage that's coming, that it's here even in the pet world, uh, that may turn a corner. But just last week, I went and had coffee with a dairy farmer. Uh, she graduated in the four-year degree and looked and in vet school. However, her experience is hers and trying to share with her the North American and even global view and and give her connections, uh, spending time with vet clinics that I believe are very progressive. And I have contacts globally now. So if you want to go down under uh, South America, uh, Europe, I can get people uh, connections. And I believe that's key. Mark said curiosity. Gwen said you don't have to grow up on a farm, but to get access to farms. So I'm looking for opportunities to go talk to students, whether it's uh, 4-H had a, a career conference, uh, just participating in 4-H meetings. It's easier virtually now, in a sense, for me to, to connect and get to more people. So planting the seeds uh, with those people that are having a curiosity uh, about agriculture. And I do a lot of training in general. Mark, I couldn't agree more with the buddy system. And I've become a huge fan of WhatsApp, whether you like it or not, uh, that it's connected with Facebook. But you make a group. And when somebody is starting to sweat, they can do a quick text. You give them an answer. They look like a hero. And you talk about it afterwards. Awesome. That's a great philosophy. And I really like your strategy of of planting that seed and, and helping to promote the different opportunities. I think sometimes people uh, might not understand all of the opportunities that are out there in agriculture. So having those positive messages and positive things to share with them is, is certainly really important. So my next question is from Mark. I'm wondering if you can speak to misconceptions that um, might exist in recruiting new employees and if you have any messages for employers about misconceptions that might be out there and why maybe they might want to consider hiring somebody in our, without that ag background that could really add some value to their team. Yeah, I um, so I'll just give an example here. I I've had a job posting um, in Quebec for a position I'm trying to fill. Um, it's a contract role, twelve months for the last. It's been posted for the last eight months, and. Um, did I, am I still on? It looks like everybody's froze here. We can hear you, but your, your face is frozen, but we can okay. hear you. Okay, <laughs> I'm sorry, I have Wi-Fi. 
OK, I'll just keep talking then. Um, so I've had this position uh, filled for or, or posted for for the last seven months, and we cannot find an individual that's ready for that role. Um, so we we have kind of really open to uh, going outside of the egg community to try to fill that role. Um, I would say in my past experiences, just never underestimate what people outside of egg can bring to your bring to your 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 company, your business. And you know, I I'm a big believer that um, you know diversity and inclusion and equity is a big part of what we're trying to do in our organization today. Bringing in somebody that um, has different ideas, different perspectives, different uh, uh, views on just kind of working with people. That's a good day for for our business and a good day for for um, for for you know bringing somebody on board. So that's what I would say there, um, Katie is um, just never underestimate the ability of a non egg person to come in and be impactful in an egg environment. Awesome, that's great. Thank you, Mark. My next question, I'm actually going to ask each of you because I'm curious on your own takes based on your experience within the ag industry. But the next question is, what is your elevator pitch that you would give about working in agriculture to those that might not be familiar with a career in ag and food? So I think this is applicable to all of us and all of our story within agriculture is different. So I'd love to hear each of your kind of brief pitch of what you might say to, to help interest somebody to enter our industry. Gwen, would you like to start? Sure, yeah, so my elevator pitch for uh, thinking about a career in agriculture really centers around the opportunity that the agriculture and ag agri-food sector has in Canada to really drive the Canadian economy. And I think some people have a uh, maybe an outdated view of agriculture and agri-food in, in uh, the world, not just in Canada. And just uh, when you think about the innovation that's in the industry, the opportunity that's in the industry, I don't know why they, they wouldn't consider a career in agriculture. Absolutely. That's great. Thank you. Maggie, would you like to go next? Um, or at BDO Agriculture, we have a, a goal, a vision, a mission of being integral to the success of our farm clients, our agriculture clients. And so what, I always start with that. And it's very cliche to say that you, um, you know, by helping farmers, you're helping feed the world, but it's very true and people can connect to it. And beyond that, it's not only helping farmers will actually help build our communities. Um, you know, if their businesses are successful, our communities are often successful. And so we try to make sure that everybody understands um, how implicit they are to that and how their accountants as trusted advisors can really be very, very helpful to farmers and so can build out strength, not only in the community, but in feeding the world. Awesome, that's a great message. Nancy, could you share yours? Uh, yes, I guess if we all have to eat, we all have that in common. Um, and it seems to be quite a hot topic, particularly in social media, but where food comes. And when I'm telling people how my world is and how all animals are cared for and all food hits the market antibiotic free, um, there's a real misconception as, as to what really happens. So do you have a curiosity of, you know, where your food comes from and, you know, are are you interested in medicine? Are you interested in innovation? Now I'm looking for people that, you know, are computer science geeks, but have a connection to egg um, because machine learning from what I can see is, is the next step. And, you know, it's exciting and it's fascinating. And I know more about a cow than most people know about their bodies through innovation, through my computer sitting here in the kitchen. I mean, I can log into a farm and know which cows are going to be bred today based on the technician, the technology that that's on the farm. So that's cool. That's exciting. Um, do you want to come join me? But there's a lot of legwork, you know, um, to be able to come in and then have fun with it and enjoy it and, and not get frustrated. So uh, it's a, it's a great world. Where's your curiosity at? Come find awesome. out with us. Yeah, that curiosity piece is important. And I think incorporating the technology and 
all the innovation in agriculture, I think that uh, certainly ties in. I know, Gwen, you spoke about how people might have an old view of agriculture, but really there is so, so much technology. So incorporating that, I think, is really critical as well. Mark, you're back. Your internet looks like you're not frozen anymore. So that's a victory. <laughs> Sorry about this. Um, yeah, so the elevator pitch, I, I would say, um, you know, I've been asked this question before. I just feel agriculture is just an awesome space to be in. Um, I think it offers like like the previous uh, presenters were saying, just a lot of opportunities, um, a, a very rewarding career path that you can pick and you can really find your place of greatness in this industry. I saw a slide earlier, one in eight people work in the agriculture industry across Canada. That's incredible. Um, you know, at a high level, and this may sound a little philosophical, but, you know, we are all charged in some way with, 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 with growing more food, growing more feed, growing more fuel um, for a growing population around the world with a reducing number of you know, a cultivated acres around the world. And, you know, with that, um, I think there's just a lot of investment uh, going into our industry. And when there's investment going in, that means good jobs um, are being produced as a result of that investment. So, um, you know, follow the investment. If you're going to pick a career to be in, I think agriculture is a great one. You know, we've got folks on the phone here that are in 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 the, the financial industry. You know, there's a ton of investment in ag going into the data science side of the industry as well. And um, the scientific advancements with um, genetic advancements and whatnot um, in the space I work in is just like fascinating. Um, so the amount of investment going into our industry is is high and and that that creates a lot of really high end positions. Awesome. That's great. Thank you, Mark. I really enjoyed that there was definitely some common threads between all of your elevator pitches, but you each had your own unique take on it. So I really appreciated that. My next question is for Gwen. And I'm wondering, uh, do you focus on different things during onboarding when you're bringing on a team member that doesn't have a strong ag background? Yeah, so in uh, in our world, uh, when somebody comes into the organization, they come in as an intern. And so there's a training program that's developed around them to help them uh, improve or, or uh, gain the skills and capabilities for what that end role is. And so if somebody comes in where, uh, you know what, they have a... Uh, a strong ag background, then that training is going to look a little bit different than somebody where uh, they don't have as strong a, of an ag background. Like I said, they have to have a passion for agriculture, but they may not uh, be as deeply ingrained in agriculture as some other people. And so in their training program, we'll adjust then for uh, what they get exposed to and really focus on uh, getting into the industry and getting a knowledge level of the industry that is where we need it to be for when they actually fill the role. And that's uh, like even some of us who have an ag background, uh, I grew up on a beef farm. When I started with the bank, I started in Chatham, which was grain, and the only four-legged animals were dogs and cats. <laughs> so you might think you know agriculture, having grown up in agriculture, but there's always, and especially in uh, in some markets, there's so much diversity within the uh, the ag market that you you never know everything. So some everybody's got something to learn, and I would say in uh, what we do is in that training program, the time that. Uh, we take to prepare the person for their role will really double down on on those areas of agriculture that are are uh, unique in some cases and and specific to markets but just to to uh, really develop that understanding and i would say yeah we are very fortunate in that there's lots of resources available in order to learn more about agriculture and uh, just this week the University of Guelph and it was partially funded by Royal Bank as well as uh, supported by Farm Credit Canada uh, launched a foundations and agricultural management course so that's that's a resource now that's available for anybody not just people who uh, aspire to be agriculture account managers at the Royal Bank to help elevate their skills and, and capabilities. Uh, we've got a ton of e-newsletters from different organizations that provide information on current issues and, 
and activities within the sector. And so in addition to that training, we really uh, encourage our people to get uh, deep into the sector so that they're traveling with what's going on in the sector. And like I said, we're really fortunate in that we have a lot of resources to draw on. Awesome. That's great, Gwen. And I really liked how you pointed out the fact that even though some of us know ag, we all have our niche within ag that we really know. And we all have things to learn about different parts of the industry that maybe we haven't been exposed to. So keeping that in the back of our head when we're onboarding new people, I think is important that we don't have all the answers either. Absolutely. So Maggie, my next question is for you. In terms of compensation and benefits, how would you communicate that working in ag can be a really rewarding experience and competitive from a, a total compensation view? First of all, can I jump back to Gwen? Absolutely. Because <laughs> I am with her. The, the industry is getting more stratified and more specialized. And so to think that you know agriculture when you're a chicken farmer uh, only, then you go into a hog barn and you're like blown away by what's happening there. I'm always learning still 30 years later. So um, one of the other hats I have is I'm a co-founder of um, Loft 32. And on that site, actually, we developed a sort of agriculture dictionary list that's sort of, um, you know, because, for example, AI in the general world may mean something very different than artificial insemination in the agriculture world. So kind of linking all those acronyms and ag terms uh, to actual words has been a really useful. It's free. So if you go on the website, you can you can find that out. Um, also in that sort of space, I don't, I'd be amiss to not mention utensil.ca, which is um, an online onboarding video training program that Crystal Mackay and Andrew Campbell have, um, have developed, and it's uh, phenomenal. It's like agriculture 101, 101, um, ag 101. Remember, Nancy, on um, the morning after the ag pups, <laughs> ag pups, we'd have to crawl, get there at 830. Uh, but this is really interesting because it's done in video snippets. And um, there's even one that's called, so your your client's a farmer, Mark, that I think like Syngenta could really use. And so they like they are taught, they're actually taught by actual farmers. And uh, it's, it's quite a useful program if you want to check it out online. So back to remuneration, I'm not really the right person to answer. <laughs> <laughs> Katie, because uh, we set industry standards for accountants, like our our um, hiring and remunerations based on accounting versus mm -hmm. agriculture. Um, so, um, you know, we have a lot of flexibility how we arrange that, and it works really well with farmers because you know maybe the busy season might be be uh, be able to work around and they only work for six months, but you know we have some flexibility around it, but really our, our numbers are set on, on industry standards for, for accounting. Absolutely. That makes sense. And so I guess, I guess we'll shift gears a little bit. I'm wondering about Mark, if you can speak to whether you have, and I, I know this is similar to what you were just speaking of, Maggie, about reference guides and tools. So it's kind of right on that same wavelength there. Mark, do you have any specific reference guides or tools about agriculture that you share when you're talking to employees as you're onboarding them? Yeah, I mean, um, yes, we do. We have a whole suite of uh, reference materials kind of in-house, but also kind of externally as well that we that we use as part of the onboarding process. But I think um, for this audience, I, I just wanted to say, like, I know Syngenta just has an abs. I've worked for three very large organizations and I will say that Syngenta has by far the world a world class onboarding um, um, process that we follow for every employee. So new employees that are coming in without an egg background, but also very specific uh, roles that people are, you know, very senior in those roles. They follow exactly the same process, and it's a year long process. And it's a year long process that involves a lot. So first week, I just hired a new person. He started on Monday, like of this week. So I'm not really involved with him this week because he's on a scheduled onboarding week where he's getting his phone set up, his computer set up. He's getting um, kind of, uh, uh, 
his vehicle kind of set up and it's a meeting with all of the the uh, the people that actually know about that so that he gets up and running as quickly as possible um, and and is ready to go. Um, then then we kind of move into a, a touch point for month one, month three, month four, month six, month, you know, it goes right through and there's certain kind of hurdles that we want to make sure people are kind of getting onboarded and feeling comfortable and learning deeper into the tools and resources. So the resources piece, I mean, in my space right now, it's kind of like make sure folks understand corn 101, soybeans 101, um, cropping systems and our products and our hybrid fits and and variety fits and that type of thing. That's all part of a very structured onboarding process. So you can imagine bringing a non-ag person into a role like this. It's, it's It could be overwhelming, but it kind of pieces it out. It separates it out. And I would recommend that that onboarding piece be very structured because people really like it. They like being taken by the hand and walked through. And this is where you're assigned your buddy. This is where you're assigned different mentors across the organization that are outside of the functional area you're working in. And it just it just really at the end of it all, um, I'm still going through my onboarding right now. And at the end of it all, you just feel like um, you've got a really good grasp of how all the pieces kind of fit together within the organization. And 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 just learning about your role at a deeper level and all the connection points um, as you move through. So that that's my kind of example of um, how we do it, and I'm super happy with uh, with with the process we follow. Awesome! I like that it's not just one week of onboarding and then go free. You're on your own, right? Knowing that they have those resources. Um, available to them is uh, is really important. And thank you, Maggie, for sharing that in the chat. Uh, if you want to check out utensil.ca, Maggie shared the link uh, so that you have access to those resources. I have another question for Nancy. So Nancy, when we were talking earlier, you were talking about the upcoming vet shortage that they're, you're kind of already dealing with. And I'm, I'm curious on, in terms of onboarding new team members, that maybe don't have an ag background. I know it's important to have an ag background joining your team. How do you kind of see influencing, you know, upcoming vets and people in the industry to to get that ag knowledge to to kind of help help them to join your team and have the experience that you're looking for um, and that production ag, that on farm more experience. Yeah, it, it's a very difficult question. So in my world with DeLaval, we are made up of animal science types. You know, whether, um, thank goodness there's only one vet. Uh, we're a handful to have. I've got other colleagues that are vets um, in the product development. Um, so many animal science um, and one team member that, you know, was a farmer for years and then has worked for a few different companies. So we are a unique mixture. And Unfortunately, our team cannot afford a non-egg experienced person to come to us because the technology and what we're doing is overwhelming in itself um, at times. So back up, back up. And now we look at a vet shortage um, as well as we're trying to get innovation into animal production and, you know, they need to be aware of it, I think. Um and we encourage people who look at now, so now I'm competing with traditional vet medicine, but if you don't want the traditional approach, you know, is there an ability to have the work-life combination? I don't know if I should use balance, but can what's coming in innovation be more attractive to people trying to sort out uh, how do I have a young family or how do I take care of a uh, of a brother or sister as a caregiver. That's my other job in my life. So I, I think it's just a matter of um, taking every opportunity to write wherever we can. Can we get into magazines or blogs? Um, you know, the education system, I know some people have gone and spoken at, at high schools with mixed results. 
I think I want to ride on the coattails of 4-H because they are having more and more clubs in the rural area um, and attracting non, non-farm non kids. Um, so I'll work with the rural pot for now. If I get uh, someone from downtown Toronto, um, I'll, I'll give it a go. But I think come to Ag, we have other options than the traditional outlook. Um, and my team is working very hard with young mothers. We don't have any young fathers on, on our team to figure out this work family combination. Um, and yeah, it's, we're learning as we go. Um, because when farmers want to see us in the field, that does create some challenges, you know, uh, for balancing families, you know, unless you're at a local clinic or a local dealership, you leave between six and eight in the morning and you're home between three and six at night. And as I'm talking to vet clinics, people are trying to wrap up their day at three o'clock. Uh, we're trying to get home uh, to their children. When I started 30 years ago, is get in the truck first thing in the morning and get home when you can. I, I don't know how I would have done it. Um, I had a, I had a family, would have had a very, very understanding uh, partner in life husband. So not only do we have to be on the leading edge of technology and in the know, we've really got to be connected with the millennials and the next generation. What do they want out of life? What are they willing to do? And those of us in my age category and higher, uh, we got to bend like the trees in the wind. Uh, You know, we have to figure this out. Great insight, Nancy. Thank you. I am looking, I'm conscious of time. I know uh, we've got to stop at 11 o'clock today and I want to keep everybody on schedule. So I am going to look a little bit in the uh, chat section to to field some questions there. So I see that Shayla had asked about recruiting new people to agriculture from non-ag backgrounds and wondering how we find them, how we get job postings in front of them. Um, She said, obviously, ag careers is an excellent source of information, but sometimes non-ag agriculture folks will see the term ag and are scared off. So where should we be posting and finding unique channels? Um, I'm going to say one one piece before I let you guys um, answer kind of where you're finding people. Um, but one piece that I'd like to mention is as part of our Feed Your Future programming, which includes today's webinar, we also have virtual career fairs. Um, we have some that are specific to different regions across North America. Next week, we actually have one that is specific to Ontario, and it is free for job seekers to attend. And we do a really um, kind of far reaching job of reaching out to employment centers and colleges and universities. And we've actually been excited about the diversity of candidates that attend these events because of the ways we're reaching out. So we have students that are science students from uh, the University of Windsor attending and food science students and agriculture students, absolutely. But we have a wide mix um, because of the way we're pushing this out. So that might be something that you could consider um, when you are looking at different sources. So we push it as our Feed Your Future and it offers opportunities in agriculture and in food. So that's one avenue. Um, Certainly afterwards, I will send some of these resources to you, some of the PowerPoints that uh, slides that we shared. Um, as well, I'll send the link that Maggie put in the chat, and I can send the link to our Feed Your Future upcoming virtual career fairs. Do you guys have any other innovative ways to connect with job seekers um, to pull them into our ag jobs? We ha- use an extensive um, co-op program, um, which we're finding we need to go younger and younger and younger, like Nancy was talking about. So we're actually reaching out to uh, guidance counselors in high schools at this point. Uh, because we have rural-based uh, offices, we want to make sure that everyone understands that there's potential professional career here right in their own town. So, you know, we want to make sure that they understand that that accounting can be exciting uh, <laughs> and that there's lots of career opportunities within that. So um, that would be a unique approach that we're trying, trying at BDO. Awesome. Does anybody else have anything else to add, Gwen or Mark or Nancy? Yeah, I I would say, uh, oh, sorry, Mark. Yeah, go Mm -hmm. ahead, Gwen. I would just say um, 
reaching out through colleagues and people know like people have a wide network and so making sure that we're tapping that network uh, for people that uh, maybe they haven't thought is of as being involved in the ag sector but could be really good uh, participants in the ag sector we also use uh, job sites like indeed which would uh, uh, throw out the net to a, a much broader audience but i do agree with what's been mentioned as far as trying to connect with uh, students when they're kind of before they start to consider where they want to to go to uh, university or college and and what they think their career might look like because it's uh, creating that awareness so that they understand what uh, terrific opportunities there are in the sector and and we can start to influence them to to make those decisions around their post-secondary edu education that would position them well to contribute to the sector perfect Mark, do you want to go ahead too? Yeah, I don't have a lot to add. Gwen kind of covered off uh, much of what I was thinking as well, so that's great. But um, back to what Maggie was saying, like one thing I know has worked in the past is getting kind of uh, summer interns in place, and it's kind of that audition, right? Both ways, because they get a chance to see what you're like, but you get a chance to see, and we we end up hiring a lot of full time people that were one once upon a time an intern. The other the other piece that was mentioned here too is just the social networking piece too, like the job fairs, the career fairs, all of that are great, but often, um, you know, whether it's LinkedIn or whether it's Twitter, those are kind of two big ones that we use to spread the word uh, through our rec recruiting internal recruiting kind of group. Um, to to ensure that um, we span it out as far as we can. Awesome. Nancy, did you have an idea as well? Uh, yes. So <clears throat> I'm just thinking, depending on what your topic is, like when you said food science uh, or science, University of Windsor, so like in our situation, technicians, so where are the colleges on robotics and on automation? So take your topic remove the word egg from it and you know maybe egg careers could help you find the universities and colleges uh, to start those internships with or to look for virtual job fairs with awesome that's great thank you i see another question in the chat as well um and you guys all have lots of experience in helping bring those new team members on so they are asking about a small business so you guys are all in larger larger organizations but for a small business they mentioned there's not as much opportunity to mentor in that way does anybody have any thoughts or suggestions of how to mentor i mean maggie i think your thoughts around using some of those online resources that already exist might be a really good idea does anybody else want to answer Actually, I, I do. I just did a mentoring system with my own children for succession on the farm. So that, that's small business. <laughs> so I actually hire someone now to do the chicken farm management for me. And uh, each of my children had an opportunity to go through a summer mentorship and or, what you know, even add to their choice whenever they wanted to do it. But they had to do it for two crops. Um, so that they would get a full experience and understand what was involved in the farm if they ever wanted to take it over. And I don't see why we don't do this more often in agriculture, even with small businesses. You know, it's not a huge commitment and um, it's it's something fairly easily set up. Awesome. I forgot to mention also BDO does a PD day. So professional development uh, is really any career, uh, professional career like this, and we we try to sneak a little agriculture in there. So once a year we do a full day program about one of the commodities. Uh, this last year we did a, a swine hog day. And so we spent the day just, you know, with with a, pro a producer, a processor, marketing. Um, bless you, Gwen. <laughs> and then we just kind of leave it open to the to the team, the you know, the people on the call to sort of ask questions. And then we constantly are updating on new programs. So kind of constant sort of thought that we need to keep our people informed um, and and uh, try to try to get them in, integrated into agriculture. And they love that PD day, whether they're from farms or not. They just absolutely eat it up. That's a great idea, Maggie. And I think it ties again into that fact that Gwen brought up earlier about even if we know ag, we know our pocket of ag and we don't know all the things. So even somebody with a strong ag background 
hogs might not be their background. So that might be a great way for them to really learn a lot more about, about the nitty gritty of that side of the industry. Nancy, do you have something to add? I guess because I've fallen in love with WhatsApp chat groups and like within our team, we've got a team chat group. Chat groups allow people, they have to be formed with safe people so that people feel safe to ask their questions. And then, you know, if you think it's something, oh my gosh, why don't they know that? You can take it offline and, and work with them. But I think chat groups are the future and our dealerships uh, run those all the time. And, you know, even our farmers, our robot farmers, they want chat groups. Everybody wants a place to go, a safe place to go to ask their question and we're instantaneous gratification society, so you have a better chance of getting the answer in the short order. Might not always be right, but if you got good people on there, again, take it offline, correct it, come back. Um, and the last thing is, is regardless of the size, I've also fallen in love with Working Genius, uh, 25 US dollars, 33 Canadian. It explains why people do what they do, why they love what they do, and why they won't do what you want them to do. Um, so I hired somebody, I was very frustrated with why won't they do this? It's not in their working genius. Um, so yeah, family should do it. I gave it to my nieces and nephews for Christmas, you know, a third of them have done it and it's quite fascinating. Awesome. Great suggestion. So I am conscious of time. I know we didn't field quite all of the questions, but I know that uh, some of us are needing to wrap up for 11 o'clock. So thank you so much to our panelists for joining us today. Uh, this was a great conversation. Uh, there's so many different areas to talk about um, in bringing in new people and how do we attract new people to our industry when we really are in need of, of more people to fill the many roles in agriculture. So. Thank you for sharing your knowledge and experience with us today. We do really appreciate it. And we will send out the link to the recording as well to anybody that signed up. Um, so we'll send that out as soon as it's available as well as some of the resources. So thank you to our panelists and thank you to all of our guests today for joining us for today's webinar. Have a great day. Thank you.